Hey guys, it is Gareth also known as Pew, Pew, PewDiePie. I hate Pew, 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 PewDiePie. Um, how many times am I going to make that trip? Who oh, knows? Um, I'm bringing you week three of season four of the GPC. We are currently undefeated, sitting in first place in Division B, so all's looking well, and we're facing off against uh, Lion or Hayden, uh, coach of the Brisbane Pyro. He is sitting, I believe, in fifth or sixth. I can't remember. Yeah, he's one of the one-on-one -on -one teams. Um, he has quite a scary offensive team. Thankfully, I do have a decent matchup against his offensive threats. Uh, Lander Asai, of course, is always threatening, so there's not much I can do about that. Weavile literally does nothing to my team because I have Cabalion. Uh, simply put, Ente is a decent stop as well. And Polyrath is like the premier stop, so... I very much doubt he's going to bring it, but I do have to prep for it regardless. Um, my Lotic is just a bulky wall that's annoying. Hitmontop deals decently well with my physical threats, except for Crobat. Um, Nido King is just scary as hell. It pretty much destroys up most of my team. The only thing that can sort of deal with it is Polyrath, but I didn't feel a need for it this week, so I didn't bring it. In hindsight, probably would have been better, but what can you do? Um, Galvantula, not too worrying. Uh, Mesprit is, if it's an offensive uh, set, I can deal with it. If it's more of a defensive rocker, then what's going to can deal with it? But it's more annoying. Mill Tank is a decent stop to Ente, so I can see him maybe bringing it. Uh, he has Trevenant, uh, which I don't see him bringing at all, and Mega Aero, which is just too quick for me to deal with. So he's definitely bringing that. Um, yeah, so the team I'm expecting to bring is Landrasai, Milotic, Hitmontop, Nido King, Garmantra, Mesprit, and Aero. Uh, maybe Weavile as well, but I doubt it. Uh, on my end, if you look, my offensive threats don't have the best of matchup against him, uh, especially the physical ones. Big one that does is Crobat, and the big special one that does is Rotom Mo. Uh, Sylveon does have a pretty damn good matchup against him. Issue is it baits out the Nido King, and that I do not want. I simply don't want to be right to bring out Nido King too often. It's a huge threat to my team, and I don't want it to to be forced to switch in. Um, so I for I foregoed Sylveon and forwent. Is it forego? Forwent. I don't know. And instead brought Glaceon, which also has a decent matchup against his team. He only has two ice resists in Weavile and Melotic. Um, Melotic is sort of like the main stop. Uh, but if you look, one, two, three, four, four ice weaknesses, and of course the smell tank, which could have thick fat. Um, four ice weaknesses, one of which is a third, you know, two times weak. It's not a bad bring, so hopefully Glaceon can put in some work this week. We also have uh, Mega Tito, which also matches up decently well. Uh, if uh, it on top drops and I get two uh, DDs up, it's GG. Like nothing could take a hit from it, so. So that was my thought process with the offensive threats. The defensive ones, I brought Cabalion, as I said, for Weavile. Uh, matches decently well up against uh, Lander Asai. Um, uh, you'll see my set. Mm, what else, what else, what else? Mega Aero is also very well dealt with by Cabalion. That was it. And Latias, mainly for Lando I and Nido King. Uh, he's probably going to have Ice Beam on Nido King or Ice Punch, but if he's Scarf, which I am expecting him to bring, uh, I can sort of uh, switch around and play around with it, so that's that. Without further ado, let's jump straight into the Team Builder. Welcome to the Team Builder, and massive shout outs to Camtasia for crashing twice whilst I was trying to record this part of the video. Fantastic. Um, so I may be a bit snappier and uh, stuff like that when I'm doing this, that's just because I'm a bit angry about redoing this. Uh, Ice Beam, uh, first we have Glaceon with Ice Beam because it's great coverage against his team, Miracote and Toxic specifically for Milotic and Miracote to maybe snag a kill on something like Galvantula, HP fighting for Weavile, uh, Modest, uh, enough speed to outspeed defensive Milotic with uh, 12 or 16 in speed, I can't remember, rest in HP, simply it's just a basic set really with Miracote. Uh, especially defensive Colberberry Latias for the uh, Lando. Ice Beam for Lando again, Dragon Balls for good neutral coverage against his team, Defog and Recover as defensive sort of utility moves. Uh, enough speed to outspeed Jolly and Nudo, uh, even though I'm not expecting it to be scarfed, it's, it can scout for it. Especially defensive, as I said, max HP, rest in special defense. 
Then we have Chopper Berry Cabalion, exact same set as last week, just with a different spread. Uh, uh, Sacred Sword Iron Head because it's decent coverage against this team. South Rider Magnet Rise because why not? Uh, Magnet Rise allows me to play around the Nidoking, King, especially because I can outspeed it. And if I do, as if he's not scarfed, I can Magnet Rise on it, kill it, and then his Lando is less of a threat to Cabalion and therefore the team. Stealth Rock because why not? Uh, then we have uh, Rotom Mo, which has very good uh, coverage against the team with Leaf Storm and Ball Switch. The only thing that can take both is Trevenant, which I don't see him bring at all. Uh, because I have Entei, I have this, I have this. It just doesn't, it just doesn't fit on this team well. Uh, I have Will O' Wisp and Shadow Ball, uh, just in case he did bring it. Will O' Wisp is just so I don't have to predict around with those two moves. Uh, and again, enough speed to outspeed Julian, you know, because it's the threat to my team. Then we have Choice Band and Crobat, because it does a lot to his team. And no speed to outspeed, uh, max speed Weavile, Brave Bird, and U turn. Uh, sort of the main two moves I'm going to be going for. Steel Wing is for the Aero Switch, and Quick Attack just for priority's sake. And finally, we have my guitar and guitar. Uh, another D Dance set this week, even though I don't think I'm going to be D Dancing all too much. Uh, if I do manage to set up on like the Mesper or something, it's fine by me. Uh, if I could get to plus two uh, and he doesn't have hit him on top, it's GG. Uh, I very much doubt that'll ever happen though, it's just like in case, most of the game I think I'm just going to be throwing up stone hedges, just because why not. Uh, yeah, that's the team, looking swanky, swanky doodle, it deals with uh, Nino King decently well, which is the main threat to my team. Uh, Landorus is always threatening, but I do have ways to deal with it with Latias and Rotom. So yeah, without further ado, let's just hop straight into the battle. And uh, yeah, I'll see you there. So you can see the teams that were brought. Uh, you already know what I brought, of course, if you watch the team builder. Uh, he brought uh, pretty much everything that I expected, except for uh, I can't remember what I said. Uh, he didn't bring Hitmon top. That was it. Uh, I thought he'd bring Hitmon top in place of one of these two, but he ended up uh, not doing so, which is interesting. Which means that Tita can become quite a big threat if I uh, set up uh, on the Mesprit, for example, or even the Monotic if I don't get burned, of course, or if that doesn't run T Wave. Um, looking at leads, he's leading either Galvantula, Mesprit, or, or Nidoking if it's a rocker. So I decided to lead off with my Crobat because if you let off with Galvantula, I outspeed it unless he's scarfed and I'd have switched anyway just in case. Um, Mesprit, I can U-turn on, and this I can Brave Bird nuke it, so... Let's stop straight in. I lead off with Crobat, as I said. He leads off with the Mesprit, as I sort of predicted. I U-turn out, does huge damage to it. Thank you, Band. And I decide to go out into T-Tar, because it can't do much to me, except for T-Wave me, of course. So, there goes my chance of setting up this. Not too mad about it, because T-Tar does do a lot of damage to his team regardless. He sets up the rocks, as I kill it off with a Stone Edge. Then he goes out into Lando, and here I am fearing literally everything. Um, I can't switch out into this in case he has like U-turn or something. I know I can take an Earth Power, I can't take a Focus Blast though. So I decide to stay in, be cheeky, and go for a, a nice bunch, predicting him to Earth Power or something. He does U-turn out, so that's unfortunate. In hindsight, if I did go for the Stone Edge, this would have done huge damage to this. Uh, you'll see how much it does later on with the Marvel Scale. Spoilers, I Toxic it. Um, I switch out to Latias because he can't do much to me. Turns out he has Toxic, so it is kind of annoying, especially because they're not recovery on this. As in, like, leftovers with recovery, and the Sandstorm's going, so I take a lot more damage. Uh, I defog away the rocks, because he has no way of setting them up again, unless this has rocks as well, which would be weird. Here, it's quite a big play. I was tempted to stay in an Ice Beam, or just recover, because this can't do all too much to me. Turns out he's a Pursuit Trapper, as I switched, uh, in hindsight I shouldn't really. Uh, Cobbleberry pops, which means that it's no longer a switch into Lando, so Latias is basically, basically a stack at this point. And uh, I go out into Rotom. Because why not? Uh, I got a Volt Switch, as I said, Volt Switch leaves Storm coverage, pressures a lot of his team except for Galvantra, of course, but it takes like 50% from at least Storm anyway, so here I, uh, I Willow on the switch in case he switched it, uh, stayed in as well, and just so I don't have to prick it around with uh, Volt Switch and stuff, so. I go for it, he goes out into Galvantula, doesn't really matter. Um, here I am fearing the Bug Buzz. Don't have much to switch in on it, aside from Cabalion, but I don't want to switch it in onto a T-Bot or Thunder, so I go straight out into Glaceon, as I know it can take two. It takes 48% from it, leftovers pop up. And here I'm thinking he'll probably stay in, because this doesn't do, you know, it doesn't pressure my team all too much. 
So I go for the mirror coat here, and you switch that into my Lothic. So I just revealed the mirror coat for nothing, uh, which is unfortunate. Uh, I go for the toxic here, uh, even though it pops his marble scale, getting uh, uh, getting uh, sustained damage on this is very good. He goes for the deed scorn, doesn't get burned thankfully. That's the one time so all season I haven't been burned by scorn. You'll so you'll be pleased to know. Here I predict him to go for a toxic or something, uh, predicting me to go for the mirror coat. So I go into my rotom. Oh no, I go I sack off my um, not yes, that's right. Actually, I went into Latias hoping that he'd go for the Toxic so I could recover up, but that wasn't the case, and I don't want to switch out on a Nido King, so I'll take the Ice Punch. I know that Nido King scarfed, as I suspected, uh, so I go straight out into Asgore and set up the rocks. Safest play. As he goes back out into the Milotic, which tells me this is a physically defensive set, with the Marvel scale, that's very annoying, so... Not much can nuke it at this point, except for Rotom. So I'm going to have to preserve Rotom best I can. Here, I don't really have a good switch in, except for Rotom, so I decided to go into it. And there is the Skull Burn. I'm not too mad about this. As I said, I didn't get burned before, and Skull is, in my eyes, basically 50-50. Um, but it is unfortunate, because this doesn't have recovery, of course, and it'll just get worn down slowly. Here, if you look at his team, he has literally zero switch ins to Leaf Storm. Galvantra is at 75%, you can't see it, it's just off screen. But with Rocks and the Leaf Storm, it dies with the burn. Pretty much everything else does the same, uh, or it gets to it KO'd at the very least, and because this is Scarfed, outspeed literally everything on his team, so, unless the Galvantula is Scarfed, but it's not a switch in. I leave Storm, it kills off the Galvantula with the rocks and the burn, so Rotom snags himself a kill, which is always nice, and it drops down as I said, and here he brings out the Lando. I do, I think it's like 30% to this with Lee Storm, and I don't want to mess around with it. I'm expecting a U-turn or something like that. I don't have much to switch into it, uh, predicting around with it, so I just decided to go out into my Glaceon and sack it off at this point. He goes for the Sludge Wave, takes it out, so we now know two of his moves. He definitely has Earth Power, and he probably has Psychic or HPIs for Crobat. So I basically know his entire set at this point, and I go out into Crobat and just go for a Brave Bird, oh, cause it kills from that range. Unpanded and it does a decent amount of damage to this Milotic, but I can't kill it unless I get a crit. Uh, max roll does 38%, I think it was. So I decided to switch out into Rotom as it brushes his entire team once more. And I go for the least storm. Uh, nothing is a switch in at this point, uh, except for when I miss. Yeah, that miss, uh, I'll go over how much it mattered at the end of the game, I will go back to it. It, there's no way of knowing how it would have affected the game entirely because, you know, we're not, uh, we're not, um, we're not experts in divination, but I'll go over my thoughts on that at the end of the game because at this point, I'm not too bothered by it, I just happened to, <coughs> just happened to miss a move. And he goes with the superpower of healing that he does have that. And he's more of a physically offensive set that's scarfed. So I go out into this, it's basically a free switch. And I believe I go for a steel wing predicting the arrow switch because this gets to it KO'd from that range. Uh, but he doesn't switch out. I didn't get the defense drop, which would have been clutch, but at this point I literally have zero switch ins to this. I decided to go out into T Tar because it's already status, I can't get burned. Um, and T Tar, even though this is fully defensive, Marvel scale does like 36% I think it is. Oh, I get paralyzed, that doesn't matter. I think I do like 38%, 36-38% with uh, Stone Edge, which is absolutely ridiculous. 36. Marvel scale, max defensive, bold, Milotic. <laughs> t is a beast, man. And plus it takes literally zero damage from anything. He recovers up hoping for the power, it doesn't happen. Toxic is wearing him down, so he just decides to kill me off this turn. And here I predict him to just go with Nido King. I don't have much of a choice here. In hindsight, I should have doubled into uh, Crobat here. If I did do that on the Super Power or the Earth Power, that would have been clutch as hell. But at this point, I'm thinking to myself, if I do that and he goes with the Ice Punch, I've essentially lost. I'm 
expecting him to expect the double. I kind of over predict in that regard. Uh, but as Bob says, there's no over predictions, only bad predictions. So you just go for the super power, Chapel Berry kicks in as I Magnet Rise. Because um, I either expected him to go for the Ice Punch or double out into Lando. So Magnet Rise allows me to take anything that it has, unless it has Sidekick at this point. Uh, I go for the Iron Head just to kill this off. And he goes out into Lando. And he reveals the Sidekick, so that Magnet Rise was pretty much pointless. I then go out into Shersh. Sure. Brave Bird is, it does kill this from this range, of course, because it's banded. And it has a chance to 2 KO, max speed, aero, you know, no HP investment. So all he has to do is miss two stone edges at this point, so why not? Uh, I go for it, it just kills me off, so... Uh, that's GG. Uh, it was a very close game. It was a very fun game. Um, all my jank sort of play sets and plays didn't really work out, like the Steel Wing or the Mirror Coat, but... Um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of frustrated uh, about that miss now more so than ever. Uh, after the battle it mattered, uh, I realised how much it mattered more so than it did on the actual day. Um, and I might as well go back to when it happened to explain why it mattered. Alright, I just, I gotta leave. Listen, there's a lot to see in this life. I'm not wasting it here. Um, before you say that I'm looking for excuses, I'm not, if anything, I'm justifying a loss. Which is very different. Uh, at this point, I was 2 0, I was undefeated, I was in first place, and I feel like I owe it to you to continue on with this good momentum, and it didn't happen. Uh, what happened is, I, if I if I hit the Leaf Storm, Nido King was dead, and this Rotom was on 22%, uh, which meant I had two more hits in me, uh, providing I switched out. So Nido King was dead, which meant uh, I didn't have to take any damage on Kamaleon. His switch into this was probably going to be uh, Lando. I would have definitely gone out into Crobat, if he did gone for Psychic, that would have been dead. But I went straight back into this, and I got another kill. So that's two more kills down, for only one death on my side. Uh, all he had left at that point was either Aero, or Lando, and the Milotic. And then, once again, it's just a matter of switching out and switching back in, and I would have got another kill, and then Titar or Cabalion was left to deal with one of the last two. So, yes it is unfortunate. It might have ended up in a 1-0 win for him anyway, um, there's no way of knowing as I said. But it's just really frustrating that uh, it sort of threw the game, uh, uh, it, it gave the momentum back to Lion when I was starting to claw it back, so it's unfortunate. I, I don't, I'm not blaming this loss on that at all, Lion played very well. Uh, I sh should have like made some decent plays with the uh, Brave Bird and not going for the Miracle, going straight for the Toxic or something. but. Um, there's not much we can do about it now. Uh, all I have to do is pick myself up and get a win next week against, I believe I'm facing T-Train, if I remember right. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah. It's kind of unfortunate. Uh, I'm most probably losing my first place now that I've lost this record. I'm only at 2-1 plus 5. Bluesy only has to win to get ahead of me. Uh, Robin only has to get a 3-0 win to get ahead of me. And Merc only has to get a 2-0 win to get ahead of me, I believe. So the chances of people overtaking me are quite, uh, quite likely. I'll still be on the top end of the table, of course, because the 2-1 record isn't bad. But uh, it's unfortunate that I slide down from my top spot. I was kind of enjoying it there. Uh, my MVP uh, this game has to be Rotom, despite the miss. It just pressured his team so much. It's just really unfortunate that that miss happened. Um, I feel like it could have put in a lot more work if it didn't. It's just really unlucky that, I did, that it did. Once again, there's no way of knowing how the game would have come out. It probably would have ended up in a much closer 1-0 win either way. I think it would have either been a case of like Cabellion or Titar living on one each on low percentage, or one of his mons living on low percentage. Um, so it, there's no way of knowing. Um, uh, to sum up this game, I've decided to start something also that I'm going to call the GIF of the Week. If you know me on Twitter, if you are part of the GPC, you know that I love GIFs. And this week's GIF is this one. I believe it summarises the battle very well, and uh, yeah, it's lovely. Everything is lovely. Um, Alright, uh, on that note, I have been pew pew pewdie by this joke never ends. And uh, don't forget to fake tears that like button. As I said last week, I'm doing that trope, so... Uh, fake tears the like button uh, because uh, nobody likes nobody likes real tears. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.